So welcome to Resto Designs, and let me tell you a story. All right guys, so before we get into Project Freebie, I'm gonna tell you guys a bit of a story of the situation here in Portugal. The situation here in Portugal is, you're not allowed to modify the car in any shape, way or form. Part of the problem is, is that the rules are so ambiguous. It basically states you're not allowed to change the characteristics of the car, and that's it. It doesn't actually go into any details. It's literally open to interpretation of who's applying it at the time, so as you can see, having a modified car here, you literally need to be committed to your passion with cars. So the reason why I've told you guys this story today is because before we get into Project Freebie, you'd be wondering why I'm doing some of the stuff that I'm doing. And it's basically because if I do need to revert the car back to its original 1.3 engine, I can do it as stress-free and as easy as possible. So for those that follow me on Instagram, You've seen photos of what's going on today and what this video is about. And it's basically a walkthrough of what I'm gonna be fitting and why I'm gonna be fitting it. All right guys, so let's get into this. So here's the pile all laid out on the floor of what I've actually accumulated and what's gonna be fitted onto the car in this small mini series of Project Freebie. As you can see, it's all been painted up and prepped, a lot of this stuff already. Uh, in part two, you'll see me actually prepping in the pro progress uh, and showing you guys what I've actually done. Right, so let's start at the front basically here. All right guys, so let's start from front to back. So what we've got here is, it's a front cross member and it's from a Passat B4. And the reason why I've gone for this particular subframe, again, it's for future proofing for the engine that's gonna be going into the car, which is the ABF. It's got a Mark III style mount. So it's Mark II cross beam, but instead of having the other style mount, it's got this Mark III mount, which is far superior. So this really makes a vast improvement over the original Mark II mount. If you guys know, if you put any kind of torque, even with the standard engines like the GTI and the 60 valve, you will actually rip out the front mount. There's a lot, lot better engine mount. And also to go with that, I've had to source a 1.4 Golf Mark III front bracket so that it, it got the right angle for the engine. Moving on now is the radiator. I've got a bigger radiator with twin fans with three speeds, with two speeds, sorry. And the reason why I've gone for this is obviously here in Portugal, it's quite warm and better to have uh, better cooling because in the summer it can get really, really hot, the temperatures. And also the reason why I'm going to fit this on now is because obviously the piping is slightly different and I'm going to have to adapt that. So I want to adapt it to this engine now so that if I do need to revert back to it at a later stage, it's all plug and play. All right, and next we'll move on to the brakes. The 1.3s have a small little seven inch uh, servo. This is again from the Passat B4, which is a nine inch servo. I'm also gonna put this with a standard 22 mil uh, brake master cylinder to increase it. I think the standard ones may be 18 or 20 or 21. So this is gonna be a big improvement as well. And to go with this at the same time, the Mark IIs have this kind of bracket on the left-hand drive cars, which bolts onto the bulkheads, and then that obviously bolts onto the back of the brake servo. I've got this again from a Passat B3, B4 is the same, and as you can see, it's almost identical, apart from you have the extra bit here, which is actually for the clutch master cylinder. So again, I'm not gonna be drilling this hole, but I'll be drilling the extra hole that we have on this side, so that then, Again, when the time comes, all I need to do is take the engine out, drill this hole, get the engine bay painted, and it's kind of all done already for me. Okay, so now coming across over to the subframe. I do like these Mark III subframes, and there's a, two reasons why I like these subframes. One, you have the better style rear engine mount for me. You got this weight, a lot of people take this weight off, I like to keep it on, because it actually takes the harmonics and vibration out of the subframe traveling in, into the cabin. You know, there is a difference between the Mark II and the Mark III. It is a lot more quieter and refined car, the Mark III. So there's a reason, there's reasons for that. One of the reasons is the mounts and this little weight. Next thing also, the other reason, the second reason why I really like this subframe, the Mark III subframe, is because it's got these little grooves in here that kind of holds the wishbone in place. Whereas the Mark II doesn't have that you have to put like this silly little, you know, one euro little washer in it 
So the advantage of having this there is you can run the Audi S3, the R32 style bushes, which I like, which are rubber. They're much more solid, but also again, don't push too much you know, vibration and harshness into the cabin. These, as we're on these wishbones, this is a, a 4 by 100 Mark III wishbone. So it is actually slightly longer, I think by about 12 mil. So it is slightly wide track. So I've also sourced a set of 256 hubs, which are the same as the 280s basically, exactly the same. But because we're sticking with 14 inch wheels for the time being, I've got a set of 256 calipers and carriers. Uh, back onto the subframe. There's an anti-roll bar here because the 1.3s don't actually have an anti-roll bar at the front. So it's got the standard front anti-roll bar. Now moving over further back, I've got a Mark III power steering. And I, the reason why I like the Mark III power steering, one, it uses the green stuff, as well as also you've got this hard line, which you can adapt onto uh, the Mark II rack if you wanted to. And then all you need to do is cut it to get rid of that original bottle and I've actually sourced also from stock this uh, power steering bottle with a bracket and the little T piece that goes onto it. Also it's got a Mark II UJ with the Mark II power steering boot. So that's, you know, almost all the power steering components. So this is a Golf Mark III 1.4 rear engine bracket, which you can see has got a single bolt which matches the single bolt that goes onto there. So that I can mount this onto my 1.3 on the Golf. Also, I've got a 1.4 crank pulley, and I've also got the 1.4 power steering pump pulley, and I've also got the 1.4 from the Mark III alternator bracket with the tensioner and a 90 amp alternator to go on it. So I'm basically going to convert this little 1.3 to run basically all Mark III power steering components, front end, and it's gonna be kind of running a much better system. So yes, it is extra work by doing these little bits, but like I said, it then potentially could make my life a lot easier if I do need to pull the engine out. I don't have to worry about the power steering, mounting on and all the rest of it. This is all kind of all done already. Now moving on to the back of the car, I've also got a GTD one box, two and a quarter inch system, which is gonna go on the car with the twin tailpipes. Also, I've got some polyurethane bushes to fit onto the rear beam. Now, the rear beam is a drummed rear beam, so it means it has no rear anti-roll bar. I've sourced an IBAC rear anti-roll bar, which, again, I'm going to have to paint this black so that it's, it's discreet and not noticeable, so that actually improve the handling, especially with the front anti-roll bar and the rear one. Braking-wise, I've got some stub axles, what I'm going to do is, I've also got some longer bolts. These are 10.9. They're 10 mil longer. And the reason for that is, I've got a 10 mil plate. I'm going to drill it and space the calipers so that I've widened the track. Because obviously I've widened the front by about 12 to 14. So I want to widen the back by about 10 mil. So aesthetically it looks, you know, as, as it was. Also using the Mark IV caliper. These are really, really good calipers. They don't seize nowhere near as much as the Mark III and definitely not as much as the Mark II ones. They're lighter and I think the pistons may be one mil bigger or so. Also I've got some uh, Passat brake lines which is a perfect converter so you can then obviously run the threaded side on that and that goes on to there. So there really is a lot to do so that's why I've break, broken this down into two or three parts which is this one will be the intro, the next one will be the kind of the stripping down and starting working on the front end and getting the servo done and showing you guys step by step how this project is gonna be taking shape. So if all goes well, guys, you're gonna see the next part of this video on Sunday. If you're actually watching this video a few weeks or a few months down the line, I'm gonna put the link here to where the next part of this video 